got this home stretch here of uh, talks. So the next talk is about uh, kind of which is high frequency array transducers for high resolution ultrasound imaging by uh, David Kim from USC. Thank you, Dr. Urban. My name is David Kim. I'm from University of Southern California. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm delighted to give an uh, have an opportunity to <clears throat> give an introduction and reporting the recent progress on high frequency ultrasound. Nobody talks about money yet, but let's do this. Uh, ultrasound, diagnostic ultrasound has a uh, worldwide market volume about $5 billion. And its composite annual growth rate is about 4%. It's not fast growing market, but steadily uh, growing uh, diagnostic market. Radiology, cardiology, and obstetric gyne gynecologists, uh, those three are main applications. Radiology has about one third, cat cardiology one fourth, and OBGYN has uh, about one fifth. And the others are pediatrics, ophthalmology, intraoperative, urology, those are other applications. Main players are GE, Philips, Siemens, Toshiba, and Hitachi and Aloka, and Esahote in Italy, and others include uh, BK from uh, Denmark, and Sonosite in Seattle, and Samsung Medicine in Korea. So this uh, ultrasound is dominated by major players. And current market is only with low frequency ultrasound from two megahertz to 12 megahertz. So we are looking at the opportunity here. When we compare ultrasound to the uh, other imaging modalities, it is safe. It doesn't have any radiation exposure. And for some patients, like uh, pediatric uh, patients, small children, sometimes we need sedation. But ultrasound doesn't need that. And it's comfortable for patient, and it's portable. If you want to get a CT or, uh, CT or MRI images, you should go to CT and MRI room. But ultrasound can come to you, either by a wheel-based system or small handheld imaging system. And it, uh, the cost is lower. The problem is the image quality in terms of spatial resolution. So we want to solve it with the uh, higher frequency. So resolution and penetration is always trade-off, and that matters most. With low frequency, if you look at uh, the, this image, it's uh, three and a half megahertz, and resolution about 0.4 millimeters, and penetration about 16 centimeters. But with a 10 megahertz, you can achieve much better resolution, about uh, 0.1 millimeters, but the penetration is limited up to five millimeters. So we, our goal is to take resolution with the uh, acceptable penetration. We are a resource center for medical ultrasonic transfer technology led by uh, Professor Dr. Kirk Sheng. And we've been supported by NIH since 1997, and we just um, successfully renewed um, another five years. So we will serve as a resource center for the next five years. And we are focused on high frequency ultrasound. We have um, about 25 research staffs, including uh, research professors, associates, and postdoc and students, and visiting scholars. Visiting scholars come from everywhere, from Africa, Asia, and Europe. Our main thrusts are you know, high frequency materials. Basically, transducers is a uh, glued layers. So main layer is the piezoelectric layer, and it has uh, one, or one to three matching layers to compensate the difference of the impedance of the piezo material and the human body. And it has a backing layer to suppress the uh, echo to achieve a wide, band wide bandwidth. So it is very important to um, source a good active material and passive material. And we develop uh, all different high frequency transducers and arrays and the imaging platform. And currently, we are actively investigating the, a new uh, area, microbeam ultrasound. A single acoustic beam can trap the particle and move 
So that's the uh, another uh, new area that we will pursue uh, for the next five years. And we have a strong collaboration with the Penn Pennsylvania State University uh, for the no novel PS looking material like uh, PMPT single crystals and its characterization. Uh, today, I uh, will talk about the transducers and arrays and imaging platform. Let's go back to a little bit basics. Uh, in high frequency ultrasound, it is really hard to make good array transducers. So still, we use a lot of single element transducers. Single element has uh, only one element with a circular aperture or rectangular aperture. But the array has a series of elements aligned in a linear fashion. It can be uh, 128, 192 elements, or uh, 2D arrays. With the single element transducers, we need to uh, mechanically move the transducer to obtain a slice of image. So at one location, we obtain uh, one scan line and move the transducer <clears throat> and the other one. So keep doing that, uh, we can achieve one slice of images. So Dr. Tenter showed ultra fast imaging, but I, I would say it's ultra slow imaging at this point. But with the arrays, uh, we don't need to move the transducers. Array is a group of elements. We just need to excite a certain group of elements and translate electronically and get the next scan lines. So it works like uh, exciting a group of elements and get one scan line, keep doing that. We just need the uh, electrical switching to do this. So with a single element, uh, the motor should be used to move the transducer, so it involves um, noise and vibration. But the array transducers, uh, we don't need to move transducers, so everything is uh, much easier, and it can achieve a uh, much uh, better temporal resolution, which means higher frame rate. And also, uh, color flow and dopplers is much easier with the array transducers. Since we start uh, 1997, um, first we introduced a 30 megahertz 48 element linear array. At that time, the pitch, uh, the spacing between elements about, it was about uh, two wavelength. The pitch is very important uh, to remove the artifact of the image. And uh, 2006, we introduced uh, 35 megahertz, a uh, little larger um, uh, element counts, 64 elements linear array with a less pitch, 1.2 lambda. And l last year, we uh, substantially increased number of elements, uh, which is uh, 256 with a one lambda pitch. For linear array, one lambda is the uh, required condition. And um, also, we introduced 20 megahertz, 192 element uh, convex array, which is a curved linear array with a one and a half lambda pitch. And uh, Stuart Foster's group at uh, University of Toronto, uh, it, introduced a commercial system in 2009 with the 15 to 50 megahertz uh, linear arrays. And we are expecting all different kinds of arrays from now for the next five years. Uh, frequency ranges from 15 to 80 megahertz, uh, linear array, phase array, and convex arrays. The technologies behind those um, <coughs> transducers, in the beginning, um, we use the stack and bond method. For each element, we lap down to the final thickness. So basically, uh, Tim Reader made 48 separate piezo layers and bond it together. It's laborious, takes a long time. It's not practical. And uh, John Canada, uh, when he made uh, linear arrays, uh, used Dyson field technique. As you can see, the there is a limitation of the size of uh, dicing blade. So with the 10 micron blade that we currently have, 13 or 14 micron curve is uh, possible. So after cutting, only small fraction uh, remains. So that gives uh, lower sensitivity. Later, uh, we use the interdigital pair bonding, basically dicing two different plates like this and fold it together. So uh, in, as a result, we could achieve about uh, six to seven micron uh, curve width. And um, by using composite, uh, we could uh, make a two-way curved composite. So simple process, large element counts. Um, that's the uh, 
fundamental of our array technology. And we will uh, investigate um, dry etching technology and optimize the dicing parameters for better performance. Two major changes. Um, so with the array transducers, now we can move from preclinical to clinical. Ophthalmology, dermatology, pediatrics, um, OBGYN and surgery. So I will show you some scenarios later. And typically ultrasound is known uh, completely non-invasive, but if you can make it small enough, we can use it as a minimally invasive uh, diagnostics like endocavity, intravenous, and biopsy applications. Visual Sonics is a front runner of this uh, high frequency ultrasound. Uh, it has um, the picture shown here is uh, 40 megahertz, 256 elements linear array. The problem though here is that it has uh, 18 millimeter image width and 12 millimeter penetration. So it's too uh, narrow to view a large organ of the human body. So it's best for preclinical imaging, and it's being marketed in that area. So uh, we are proposing uh, uh, convex arrays and phase arrays. Let's say uh, we want to see the posterior segment of the eye. With the linear array, with limited field of view, you can see only a part of uh, eye. But with the curved linear array, we can see the entire ball of the um, uh, eyes. This is the uh, simulated uh, images of a dog eye uh, used by um, field two simulation package uh, created by Dr. Uh, Jensen. So with the linear array, um, exciting group of elements, uh, we obtain uh, a slice of images. But with convex, with curved aperture, we can obtain wide field of view. The other way is the phase array. We can steer the beam. So we can <clears throat> achieve a wide field of view. And you may notice that the element size of the phase array is smaller, because uh, for phase arrays, it has tighter pitch requirement. It should, the pitch should be uh, lower than uh, half wavelength. So even smaller aperture size, we can obtain a wide field of view. But the problem with the phase array, because it still is the beam, uh, it should have better um, directivity from uh, each element and the better crosstalk. So uh, if not, we will lose the uh, images, the, the image quality at the edges. So high frequency ultrasound, it has um, high resolution, but low penetration. So it will be adequate for small organs. Pediatric urology, uh, we can visualize pediatric kidney. It has thinner body wall and the size is acceptable. Recently, um, my collaborator, Chester Co at Children's Hospital in Los Angeles, uh, got a uh, solicitation letter from GE. They are promoting GE V-Scan portable system exactly for this uh, kidney imaging uh, to diagnose hydronephrosis. Neonatal brain, uh, Dr. Tenter, um, a supersonic imaging showed beautiful images uh, with the cerebral flow and we can use higher frequency arrays for that application. Neonate has uh, fontanel um, up to three to four months, so we can um, observe the brain growth and um, malfunction. We can use gynecology in gynecology to have a um, better resolution of small fetus in the early stage of uh, pregnancy or get the image of the uh, cervix. And prostate is also possible. And during the brain surgery, after opening the skull, before and after surgery, we can use these array probes and evaluate the ultrasound images. So this is the picture of 20 megahertz convex array. Um, it has curved in the uh, convex way in azimuth direction to uh, achieve a wide field of view. It's curved in concave way in the elevation direction. And this uh, project is supported by USC Stevens uh, Institute for Innovation. Um, it has a technology commercialization fund. So we are um, developing this array for ophthalmic imaging system. And this curved aperture uh, was possible by a uh, soft uh, piezo layer. If it's just a solid uh, piezoelectric ceramic, it will break when we curve it. But uh, this uh, composite 
It is a series of uh, piezo ceramic um, por uh, poles in the uh, polymer layer. So one three means uh, one is the directional uh, connectivity of uh, piezo. It's connected only in the z direction, but the polymer is connected in all three directions, x, y, z. So we can uh, curve and conform this uh, piezo layer. And uh, this uh, composite has uh, certain requirements, the ratio of um, width and height, and also the gap. So we are satisfying um, uh, that, those requirements, and we go through the uh, simulation to optimize these parameters. And we also developed a 30 megahertz phase array. Um, we use the um, flex circuit and parts for uh, 50 megahertz linear array. So it looks big, but the actual array size is about two millimeters by two millimeters. So, and it has 64 elements in that space with the uh, 30 micron uh, half lambda pitch. So this is the uh, highest, highest frequency medical phase array yet uh, that we were reporting. And we could achieve uh, 26 megahertz center frequency with the about 60% bandwidth. Uh, but we need to improve the crosstalk. Uh, currently, it's about 23 dB, but we should go down under uh, 30 dB to uh, optimize performance. And of course, we also, um, and it is also funded by uh, USC Coulter uh, Translational Research Partnership Program. Uh, we are targeting this approach for pediatric imaging. And we also have our 30 megahertz linear arrays. And um, we use uh, one, three, or two, two composites. And so lens to our self focused approach. And we have a 64 channel digital beam forming imaging platform. Uh, it has 256 transmit channels and 64 receive. And uh, we <clears throat> can obtain our B mode images with a single focusing and multiple transmit focusing. And also, it has a uh, power Doppler mode, and we can access all digital RF data for uh, post processing. The left side is the uh, wire phantom image uh, obtained by 30 megahertz phase array. So you can see uh, five wires um, in the image. Uh, this is focal point at uh, five millimeters. And the right side is the um, anterior segment of the rabbit eye. You can see this uh, anterior structure of the eye, like cornea and iris, iris and ciliary bodies. With the 20 megahertz convex array, uh, as you can see at the right side, we can achieve like uh, about 50 degrees uh, view angle. Uh, again, uh, it's showing the <clears throat> anterior structure of the uh, animal eye. We implemented uh, multiple transmit focus. So if you compare left and right, right side image has uh, five different focal, focal points. So you can see clear wide images at each point. But uh, implementing this uh, five transmit focus you are losing uh, frame rate. So it's a, it's a trade-off uh, between number of focal points and the frame rate. If you look at the uh, cyst image uh, with the same 30 megahertz linear array, uh, the leftmost is the single transmit focus. The center is uh, focused at three points, and the fifth one has uh, five different focal, focal points. So you can see uh, better penetration. And zebrafish uh, is frequently used um, to evaluate um, the cardiac um, the drug use. Because if we cut a part of um, zebrafish heart, it regrows. So it has a one atrium and ventricle. And you, can, you are looking at the um, pumping heart. And we also uh, got the uh, Doppler signal. This is the simple coding to the audio. So you are listening to the heartbeat of zebrafish. So we have uh, now 20 to 30 megahertz uh, linear convex and phase arrays. And 
different from linear arrays with convex arrays and phase arrays, we can obtain a wide field of view. So we are expecting um, expanding application from preclinical to clinical imaging. So let's go back to the original uh, market size. We are expecting a bigger pie with the high frequency ultrasound, uh, with the uh, new applications of pediatrics, ophthalmology, and intraoperative urology, and OBGYN. So if you would be interested in collaborating with our group, uh, please contact us at this uh, website and my email. Thank you very much. Please. What's the main advantage of using PA directed materials over Siemens? Um, Yes, uh, Dr. Kuryakov showed uh, the table. I agree with most of them. So, um, um, the uniformity um, is, may not be as good as cement, but uh, it depends on the process. The so fabrication process det determines the uniformity of the array transducer. And the, uh, the the coercive curve, um, piezoelectric material, uh, shows better. So uh, still, um, piezoelectric material-based uh, transducers are used in the medical ultrasound market. But CIMA, uh, I think uh, they are still trying to uh, enter uh, this area with the um, um, mostly widely used uh, convex arrays in the range of uh, three and a half megahertz and some linear arrays. But CMOD has uh, advantages of, uh, I would say, uh, 2D arrays. It's much easier than um, um, piezo by uh, CMOD uh, to fabricate uh, 2D arrays. Yes? <laughs> They have 20 that can achieve 30, and they have 30 that can achieve 15. So, in the images, because it's based on the frequency band you're using, so this could be just their limitation. On the yes. other hand, uh, you transducer, what's, can you achieve better than using 40 megahertz? Can you achieve better than 15? Um, <laughs> so, um, I, I can't be against the physics. With 40 megahertz, uh, 12 millimeters seems the um, uh, limit in terms of penetration. But um, if we use lower frequency, 30, 20, or even 15, uh, we can determine the penetration depth and resolution for each application. So um, with 20 megahertz, uh, we want to see the posterior segment of the human eye, which is a one inch diameter uh, size. So the penetration is about uh, 25 to 30 millimeters. I think that's achievable by 20 megahertz. Visual Sonics has linear arrays only up to this point, but we are proposing linear phase and convex arrays. And they use different fabrication approach. Uh, for dicing, they use laser cutting. And uh, we use uh, mechanical dicing. The difference is that with laser dicing, um, there is a thermal damage. And their uh, pitch is about one and a half lambda. I guess that's because the thermal damage limits the lower pitch. In our case, we can go down to um, one lambda and half, uh, one, half lambda uh, for the phase arrays, but mechanical dicing has a um, similar issue. It has mechanical damages. So we need to optimize the uh, parameter, dicing parameters, and also that uh, deep reactive ion etching, that's the uh, alternative that we are uh, looking for. Okay.